Going down fight fans, this is Spaniard, Northwest Fight Scene. I'm sitting here with the fugitive, Dave Jansen, fresh off his win from Bellator. Um, that choke, man, that Bravo choke is what everybody's talking about, your win over Scott McAfee. Um, there were two seconds in that round. Um, before we get to that, um, let's talk about kind of some of your training, um, your training before that fight, um, kind of where you've been and what got you up to that fight. Yeah, well, I was actually uh, helping three other fighters get ready for their fights, and I got, I got that Bellator fight on two and a half weeks' notice, and the timing was just right because I had, I had just gotten done helping Zach George with his camp. Before that, I was, I was helping out with Ian Loveland, helping uh, give him rounds for his UFC fight. And then right before that, it was, um, I was helping out uh, George Sotiropoulos. So even though I took the fight on short notice, I, I had uh, a solid month of sparring under my belt. How much did you know about McAfee going into the fight? Well, uh, just, just what I could find online. Um, first things first, I, I figured out he was from a really strong camp with Uri Faber's um, Ultimate Fitness Team Alpha Male. So I knew he, uh, he was going to be well-rounded. <clears throat> and I was actually able to find two of his fights online. And he looked like he had pretty heavy hands. And I figured that was his most solid attribute. But then just doing a little research, looking on SureDog and whatnot, I saw he had two losses uh, to, to chokes. So I figure his weaknesses played into my strengths. Now um, talk about the first round and uh, leading up to the choke um, and how the choke, how you got the choke. Yeah, the first round, I came out. Uh, my game plan was to just go out there and throw some hard leg kicks because I figured he was going to expect me to shoot right away. A lot of people just expect me to try to set up the takedown. <clears throat> so I kind of tried to put his mind at ease by kicking him in the leg a bunch, trying to convince him I, I was there to stand with him. And I uh, actually, uh, after two kicks, I saw him kind of shaking out that leg. So I knew I was doing some damage. And then I, I kind of switched it up with a Superman punch. I didn't land with that, but I was able to kick his rear leg at that point. And then uh, threw a nice right hand that landed and then that's actually when he threw his first punch, and he caught me right in the eye and cut me up a little bit. And then I saw him kind of loading it up again, and that's when I timed the takedown. I got the double leg and ran it. <coughs> and uh, just kind of ground and pounded him for a bit, uh, postured up, dropped some elbows. I was able to pass to, well, I kind of hung out in half guard for a while. And I was trying to kind of bait him into a guillotine choke but he wasn't really turning into me like, like I wanted him to. And that's when I heard the, the, the short time bell and I just cinched in the, the gable grip and was able to punch my arm through and lock on the Bravo choke from, uh, I started it from, from uh, half guard and then I passed the side control and that's when I finished it. Now is that a move you use a lot? Is that something that you kind of have in your bag of tricks or something you use a lot in training? Or where did you learn that move? Yeah, I learned it um, at Quest, at Team Quest. I, I, you know, I started, the first thing I ever learned was a guillotine choke. And after that, I kind of built, added on with uh, the anaconda choke. And uh, the, the Bravo choke was just kind of natural extension of the anaconda. Um, over the past three years, I've, I've Man, I keep learning new ways to set it up, new ways to uh, kind of add the pressure, you know, whether it's a knee ride, you know, on the face to set it up. Or uh, lately, I've, I've, I'm kind of just clasping on with that gable grip, and sometimes I can even get the choke without even locking onto the bicep, kind of like how Matt Hughes did with Ricardo Almeida from the front quarters position, but sometimes I can just pin that, that shoulder across right here without even actually getting to the bicep, and that's what I did for the first three or four seconds of that choke against McAfee before I locked on to the bicep, so um, yeah, I learned new tricks all the time with it. Now, you got another win that's got to feel good since um, you got your pink slip from the WC, and um, how, how, what are the feelings going through your mind now? 
Yeah, that was that was really important. You know, losing two decisions in a row, and really, you know, not having a win since 2009 against Crunkleton. Uh, you know, I only fought three fights in the WEC, but um, yeah, it's good. I'm glad I was able to get right into Bellator. You know, even though I got cut by the WEC, which was kind of a surprise because let's see, it was over two months after I lost my fight um, with. Ricardo Lamas, and it was a really competitive fight, you know, I've won some really close fights and I've lost some really close fights, but, uh, and that was a really close fight, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad to get right on with, with a, another quality organization like Bellator, and uh, hopefully I get some TV time with this next fight, because it looks like I got at least one more fight with him, and I imagine it's going to be sometime in the summer, because the the tournament season's for right now. Now, um, you've been training, you've been around, you're not with Team Quest anymore. Um, today, you're here at Grand Avenue Boxing Gym. Um, you're with a couple other places. You train with George Sotaropoulos. Um, so talk about some of the places now that you're training. Yeah, well, uh, I, I want to thank all my friends in Team Quest because I still have family there. But uh, I, right now, I'm just trying to expand my training, working on my hands exclusively for the past two weeks. And I'm going to get back into the, the grappling and the wrestling and the takedowns. But, uh, but yeah, uh, fisticuffs up, up in Vancouver with Leonard Gabriel and George Sotaropoulos. They've been a big help. As well as Impact, Michael Chapman out in Beaverton, Impact Jiu-Jitsu. Uh, John Salami's got a new school there in Clackamas called Visionary Martial Arts. And, yeah, Grand Avenue, you know, this is... This is a really good spot, you know, it's not far from my house. I don't have to spend a bunch of money in the gas tank. And uh, I can just, I can come here, work my hands, jump rope, shadow box, and just kind of button down what I really need to work on. And that's my hands and head movement, and not getting hit so much, and throwing straighter punches and quicker combos. Now, a lot of people think that there's a lot of um, bad blood between boxing or MMA and that kind of stuff. Do you feel that here, or is it more well accepted here? Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't think, I, I haven't really experienced any bad blood. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm still an outsider looking in, you know, with, with, with boxing, I, I don't really know who's who. But I, I came here just to get a fresh set of eyes on my hands, you know, and although a lot of the techniques don't transfer over um, exactly like from boxing to MMA, some of the footwork and, you know, you take out the kicks and you gotta be wary of takedowns. And, but, no, I haven't felt any bad blood. Uh, if anything, I think boxing and MMA in, in the Northwest can kind of mutually build off each other and, Drive. I see it's more MMA fighters are going to work their hands exclusively and should bring some more business to the boxing gyms and uh, vice versa if the boxers ever want to cross over. Uh, yeah, the boxing the boxing is kind of intriguing just because you know the, the MMA paydays aren't aren't anywhere near the boxing paydays still you know and who knows you know with Nick Diaz. Taking a boxing fight, right, you know, right. that's see maybe if the money might get up to it, right? Yeah, so I mean, uh, who knows? You know, I I could take a boxing fight in the future uh, <laughs> just to get the money, right? And, and the experience and, and uh, just to stay busy. But yeah, wow. that's that's you know that's that's light years in the future. For, for me. Right, for, right now, I, I really just want to work my hands to be a solid uh, puncher. Awesome. Well, hey, Dave, I thank you. For, thanks for taking the time. I mean, I appreciate it. Um, good luck on any fights you got coming up. Um, you got anybody you'd like to thank? Uh, yeah, just every, everyone I already thank. Probably uh, Robert Fallis for coming out to Bellator with me. All my friends at Team Quest. Um, yeah, Grand Avenue. Uh, Fred, Frank. Um, who else? Bruce. All the guys who have been helping me with the network. And yeah, of course, yeah, George Sotaropoulos, Zach George, Ian Loveland, the Healy brothers, uh, Leonard Gabriel, Michael Chapman, and uh, yeah, all my, all my friends and family.
fans. Thank you very uh, much. Heard it here. Spaniard, Northwest Feisty, and the Fugitive, Dave Jansen. Yeah, and of course. Thank you. Thank you, Spaniard. <laughs> Keep up Thank the good you. work. Thank you very much.